Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena for the release of your spirit. We thank you for your anointing that is here this morning. We thank you for ministering to us with the release of your spirit that will receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our soul. Father, we thank you today because your word is coming with life, it's coming with direction, it's coming with inspiration. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to welcome everyone to this live transforming service today. And God's word will be coming to us that we need for where we are going. And we've been looking at overcoming emotional warfare. Uh, the day you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is a need for you to begin to grow in the revelation of your new nature. We have to grow, we have to grow in the revelation of our new nature in Christ Jesus. If we're not growing in the revelation of our new nature, we can be distracted by emotional warfare. You know, one of the primary targets of the enemy is to keep you distracted all the time. And distraction has a potential to reduce your effectiveness to reduce your strength to from the track of the will of God. So the enemy always wants to interfere with your life. He wants to interfere with ungodly thought. He wants to interfere with situation. He wants to interfere with opposition that could take you off the direction of the will of God. And this is what the enemy do all the time. But we need to put ourselves in a position where we can overcome any form of satanic interference that may try to distract us from reaching our full potential. Sometimes you have received a vision from God of what you want to do. If you are not in the place of prayer, if you are not in the place of the word of God, in the place of meditation, it will be difficult for you to push that vision forward. So today we want to look at Casting down imagination. Casting down ungodly imagination. You know, the enemy works in the realm of the mind. He drops ungodly thoughts with an intention that you will feed that thought. The enemy drops ungodly thoughts in our mind. Now, if someone tells you they're Christians and they have never thought about the wrong things before, you just know they're lying to you. Because the enemy will try to intervene, so to interfere, he wants to interfere with your thought process. He wants to interfere, he wants to encroach into your thought life. Before you do anything wrong, you have to first think of it. 95% before we do anything wrong, we are thinking about it until we give life to it, we give action to it. So the enemy comes with the thought. He knows that if he can consistently drop those negative thoughts in your mind, many paraventure one day you will allow it to come to pass. That is why the enemy doesn't stop throwing those thoughts in your mind because he believes, you know, the enemy believes that you one day you obey him. <laughs> he had so much, he believes that one day you are going to do what he's dropping on your mind. And this is the reason why you need to cast down those imagination, those ungodly imagination. 
you know, you can pray for three hours and then you have this flash of adultery or you have this flash of something that happened five years ago or maybe this flash of something that happened three months ago. You know, it, those moments are satanic interference. They are trying to gain access into your mind. They are trying to keep you off f- focus, off, off the will of God, off the plan of God. All they're trying to do is to distract you. So, we're going to look at first, uh, uh, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter ten. In Second Corinthians chapter ten, uh, I want to look at from verse three. In Second Corinthians ten, from verse three, it said, Second Corinthians chapter Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse three said, "For although we walk in the flesh, for although we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Although we 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 walk in the flesh." But we do not war after the flesh. Although we, we war in the flesh, we do not, although, although we walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know, these strongholds are the thoughts the enemy is trying to build on your mind. You know, I was talking with some people today, this, uh, you know, we're discussing about outreaches, reaching people, winning souls. And then someone said, sometimes we reach out to people, they don't respond. We we'll talk to people, they don't respond. I said, listen, the soul winning is a spiritual thing. If you're going to win a soul, you have to be spiritually minded. It takes prayer. It takes consistency. It takes focus in God and his word to win a soul. Just that you talk to someone doesn't mean they're going to respond. You need to follow them up in the place of prayer because the enemy of their soul wants to keep them away from God. A Satan doesn't want anyone to get to a place where their life can be transformed. Satan does not want anyone to get into a place where their life can get better. He doesn't want that. What he wants is that people should stay off God, should stay off the will of God, should stay off the purpose of God. So for you to win a soul, you got to be spiritually minded. And being spiritually minded begins with making God's word the foundation of your thinking, the foundation of your lifestyle, the foundation of the things you do. If I'm not word of God minded, it should be difficult for me to carry out the will of God. In my flesh, I can't carry out God's will. In your flesh, you can't carry out God's will. So the, the enemy comes to build a stronghold in the mind of people. And what he is in building those strongholds is on godly thought. Thought of, you cannot make it. The thoughts keep coming. You cannot make it. The thoughts keep coming. This marriage is ended. This marriage has ended. The thought is coming. You, you are not good. This is why nothing works out for you. And those thoughts, the enemy is the one projecting those thoughts. He's projecting those thoughts. You will never get out of this sickness bed. You know, he's dropping those thoughts in your mind. Maybe there is how you are feeling in your body. And he said, oh, don't you think that it may be a sign of cancer? You just quickly hear that voice. Let me say this to you. Satan is a talking spirit. Satan talks. People used to think that Satan doesn't talk. He talks. He dropped those thoughts. He start conversing with you. He start talking. And this is why you need to know when the conversation is not right. And say, no, 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 I'm not going this way. If you are not conscious, the enemy can talk you into something that you never expected. You are a nice person. You're a good person. You're a loving person. But you see, the enemy can begin to drop thoughts in your mind that can change your way of doing things. He can do that if you allow him to do that. So the scripture where we read here said, for, for, for the weapon of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. So when these things are coming, you need to pull them down. You need to pull them down. If you don't pull them down, it will be difficult for you to move in the direction of the will of God. How do people commit suicide? It starts with a thought. The thought of suicide, it begins with hopelessness. Someone being hopeless. What am I living for? What do I have to show for? Look at my life. Look at my business. Look at my ministry. 
or look at my marriage, nothing is working. Those thought begins to come, the thought of the thought of hopelessness. Let me say this to you. Once in a while, you need to preach hope to yourself. You need to tell yourself everything is going to be all right. You need to tell yourself that life is going to be good for me. You need to tell yourself I'm more than a conqueror. You don't need to wait for a preacher to do that for you. You need to preach that to yourself. You need to hear that, that this is not the end of my life. This is not the end of my story. My life will get better. My dreams will get better. Life will, it doesn't matter the mistake you've made. It doesn't matter the struggle you're into. You just need to begin to tell God, thank you, Father, for strengthening me, for keeping me. Why am I saying this? Because the enemy can successfully build thoughts of hopelessness in your mind. That you don't see hope. All these things we are doing, what is the benefit? What is the hope? What, what, what is the future of our giving? What is the future of what we're doing in the kingdom? What is the future? If you are not careful, deception can ruin your destiny. And Satan is good at this. He's a master at this craft. You are doing what is right, and then he tells you, why, can, why should you be doing that? They don't really care for you. They don't really have interest on you. Why should you be doing that? They, he he, he stopped telling you the reason why you got to stop doing that, that that is not good for you. Can I say this to you? There is nothing you do in the kingdom that will go unrewarded. There is nothing you do in the kingdom that will go unrewarded. What the enemy likes to do is to put you in a position where you begin to doubt the goodness of God. Where you begin to say, well, I'm, I'm just there. I'm just there. I'm just there. I'm just doing it. No. When you're dealing with God, you have a future. When you're dealing with God, you have a destiny. I don't care how many times people stumble and miss it. The God we have is the God of restoration. You look at yourself and say, where do I go from here? You know, sometimes when you make up your mind to do the will of God, the enemy have also made up his mind to distract you. Oh, you don't know. You, oh, you think Satan will fold his hand like this and be watching you. Oh, Dana, go, go, Dana, go, Dana, go, Dana. No, I said no. No, go, Anjani, Anjani, go, 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 go. Satan doesn't cheer people up. <laughs> the Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You need to get to a point where you are your own greatest motivator. Because if you don't, you're out of this race. Because it's going to come with so many strategies, so many schemes, so many deceptions to ensure he sway you. And this is why he's bringing those thoughts into your mind. When those thoughts come, you think you're not holy. No, you are holy. That was why it came. <laughs> oh, it's like I'm not holy. It's like I'm not righteous. Why would I think this? Why would this come into my mind? Why should I think this? Why should I? How did this come into my mind? Listen, the enemy is trying to interfere. He's trying to come in. He's trying to bring you back to the old ways. He's trying to bring you back to the ways of the flesh. And th there is a contention between your spirit and your flesh. This is why we renew our mind. This is why you can hear that a very great preacher who have preached holiness, who have preached or honor, who have preached great things, strip off. Because it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, you, keep, you have to keep watching your heart. Some of us think that, oh, I've been a Christian for 30 years. Oh, I've been a Christian for 20 years. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm very strong. It's not true. Something will happen to you if you don't consistently stay with God's word daily. Something will happen to you. You can never come to a point, and say, oh, you know, I, I'm done with reading my Bible, you know. No, I, I'm, I'm very powerful. I'm very strong. Listen, your strength doesn't come from you. Your strength comes from your submission and devotion to God's word. Your strength doesn't come from you, honey. Your strength does not come from you. Your strength comes from devotion to God's word. So casting down imagination, ungodly desire, ungodly thought, this thought comes. It comes to people. And then you need to say, Lord, I thank you. I have authority over these thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I cast down these thoughts. 
In the name of Jesus, I cast down these thoughts. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I cast down these thoughts. Why? If you don't cast it down, it will end up as a stronghold on your mind. And then your, your, your mind is still. Have you ever seen someone that maybe you're driving and they're walking across the road, they didn't see you? Have you seen that kind of thing before? You're driving and then someone is walking, but they didn't see you. They didn't see the car. And you just, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? Yes, I want to tell you what is wrong. Something about overtaking their mind. They are preoccupied with their thoughts. And that is why we need to renew our mind with God's word to be able to bring those thoughts into captivity. And look at what the scripture said here. Glory be to God. And look at what he said there in verse 5. He said, casting down casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Casting down. Casting down imagination. Casting down. He said, he said casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down. Casting down. There are things to cast down. Why should we cast it down? If we don't, if we don't cast it them down, if we don't cast these things down, they will cast us down. Yes, if you don't cast them down, they will cast you down. It's like casting down every imagination, casting them down. And how do you cast down imagination? You cast down imagination that is not consistent with God's word by speaking the word of God over your mind. By declaring, uh, because I'm the righteousness of God, this will not overtake me. Because I'm the righteousness of God, this is not my thoughts. You know, one day a man was in the balcony uh, and he, he heard the voice of Satan telling him, jump from the balcony. Jump. And he said, no, you jump. You jump. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, he has to control his mind. The enemy said he jumped from the balcony. If the thoughts came, then he said, no, you jump. You jump. You need to know when it's not the voice of God. He said, jump. He said, no, you jump. Because if you don't cast down that imagination, that imagination can begin to take root in your heart. How do things take hold of us? It's when we fail to treat them right. And how do you treat them right? By casting them down. So for you to have victory in dealing with emotional warfare, every ungodly thought should not be given expression. Every un the thought will come. The thought will come. If I tell you that the thought will not come, I'm lying to you. The thought to do things that are not right will come, but it's what you do about them that makes all the difference. You can fast for 40 days and still have negative thoughts come to your mind. That is why Paul said, don't be conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. The thoughts to do the things that you, you know that will bring embarrassment, the pressure can come on a person. And this is why we cast down imagination. This is why we spend time in the place of prayer as our mind and our, our mind can be able to line up with the will of God. Casting down the thought of defeat. Some people can just accept, accept defeat. Oh, I've done everything I know I can do, but I, I can't go forward anymore. This is the end of the road. The thought of defeat. You know, casting down the thought of defeat. There is also a thought of rejection. You know, casting down the thought of rejection. You know, some people struggle with rejection. You know, let me say this to you. Never allow how people treat you to make you discredit yourself. Never allow how people treat you to make you discredit yourself. You're beautiful. You are beautiful. Believe me. If you are a male, you are handsome. Believe me. Those who are trying to send a mail of rejection to you are people who are not secured because of who you are. 
When you see people trying to reject you, trying to make you feel like you're nobody, they are struggling with your identity. They are struggling with your personality presence. So God made you beautiful. God made you wonderful. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. If nobody told you this, I'm telling you this. Believe me. I'm a prophet of God. You are beautiful. If nobody told you this, I'm telling you this, I'm a prophet of God, you are handsome. You know, some of us can tell us, oh, I wish my nose was this, like this. I like that nose. I wish my eye was like that. That's the thing that God made a mistake. That's what they're trying to say. I wish like my hair were brown. I like brown hair. I like brown hair. I like it when they're brown. I like it when they're brown. I, I wish my eyes were... We are yellow. We are yellow color. I like eye. You know, you know what people are struggling with? I with my mouth was this way. All kinds of problems folks are dealing with. I wish my legs were a little bit straight and not just this other way. Oh, how wish God added more height to me? Oh God, I think you made some mistake concerning my height. People are, some people are, I don't know what is wrong with that. They are so bothered about their eyes, their ear, their nose. Everything bothers them. No! You are made in the image of God. You are the only person we have on this ship. You are the only one. If, if we see another version of you, we know they are copying you. If we see another version of you, we know someone is trying to copy me. You only have one faith man, but nobody will be like me. So God has made you unique. You know when someone says, oh, I don't feel like being a, a male after that. I don't feel like being a, hey, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't, you know, I saw a young man in a local church some few weeks back, and this young boy is behaving like a girl. So when I saw him, that got my, I said, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come. He said, do you want to do my hand? Come here. I said, come. You are a male and not a female. I said, addressing him immediately. <laughs> I said, you are a male. You are not a female. Walk like a man. Be like a man. You're not a woman. If you see this young, young just he shouldn't be above 15 years old. Behaving like a woman. I said, no, no, don't do this. This is not me. Culture may change, but God's word is true. Culture may change. People may try to change their personality type, but you should be who God has made it to be. When that thought come and said, you're not supposed to be a woman. You're supposed to be a man. Say, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke your voice. Don't let it stay. If God made you a male, it's because that is the best you ever have. If God made you a female, that is the best you will ever have. Whatever God has made you to be, that is the best you could ever have. Don't try to change yourself into something you are not. You see, those things come from the enemy. It, 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 that low self spirit, the enemy begins to make you feel like you are not qualified, you are not worthy. No, you are righteous. You are the righteousness of God. You are beautiful. You are excellent. You are great. You need to see yourself the way God saw you. Don't see yourself as the rejected looking for hope. Don't see yourself as the frustrated looking for hope. See yourself as the blessed that will inspire others with great hope. That's how to see yourself. See yourself blessed. See yourself successful because the voice of the enemy is a voice of destruction. The voice of the enemy is a voice of hopelessness. It makes you believe that God does not love you. God does not care for you. If God loves you, why are you going through this? Let me say this to, this to us. Jesus was in the will of God. He was nailed to the cross. And the intention of the enemy is to make you feel like God does not love you. God loves you. God loves you. When you wake up in the morning, you tell yourself, I'm anointed, I'm beautiful, I'm intelligent. Say that to yourself. I'm anointed. I'm intelligent. I am beautiful. You know, some people, 
because they have believed in themselves so much, they walk in such a way to make others feel uncomfortable about themselves. Have you met people like that before? Have you met people like that before? They believe they are more beautiful than everybody. Or they believe they are more handsome than everyone. And they walk in such a way that they try to get your attention. Those folks are struggling from low self-esteem. They are looking, they are seeking for approvals. They are seeking for the attention of others. God made you unique. Celebrate your strength. Don't forget that. God made you unique. I said, celebrate your strengths. God made you unique. You wake up every day and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for how unique you have made me. Wow. Lord, I just want to thank you for how faithful you have been. Lord, I just want to thank you for how glorious you have been, how faithful you have been. Lord, I just want to thank you for how you have helped me. You need to begin to see yourself in the light of who God has made you. Why am I saying this? The enemy will come with the thought of frustration. And he drops those thoughts with an intention to create distraction. So you need to cast it down. Your mind is like airports. Thoughts keep landing. Thoughts keep coming. If you don't see them this week, you see them next week. You see them the other day. But you need to begin to put your mind on God's word as your mind can be renewed, as you can be moving forward in the direction of the will of God. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. What is his mission? His mission is to accuse you. It's to make you feel like you're not worthy. God doesn't love you. God doesn't want you. No, God loves you. The blood of Jesus was not only shed for our past sin. Whatever sin that man will deal with in this earth today, the blood of Jesus is here to clean it. It's here to clean us from every unrighteousness. And God loves you. Every ungodly thought, bring them into captivity. Wake up every day excited knowing that it's a beautiful day. Wake up every day knowing that your best of days are not behind you, your best of days are ahead of you. Wake up every day with this notion that God's plan and purpose for your life is greater than the challenges you could ever face. Wake up every day with this expectation that big things are going to happen. You need to begin to see yourself the way God saw you. God saw you great. They saw you wonderful. You know, when I was very small, I battled a lot with low self-esteem. You know, as children, you see people say things to you, and maybe because of the family where you came from, they sell more of things to you to make you feel bad, to make you feel like you're nobody. You, you have nothing. You can't do anything. But you see, when I came to Jesus and I started reading this book, I noticed that rejection is a choice. Rejection, to accept rejection is a choice. Someone could reject you doesn't mean you have to accept it. Someone could send you a mail of rejection doesn't mean you should take it. Someone could look at you and say, you are not beautiful. Doesn't mean you should listen to that. Someone could look at you and say, you're good for nothing. Doesn't mean you should accept that. You, you need to understand that your life is bigger than what you're going through. Because a lot of people struggle with low self-issue. They think that is who they are. That is not who you are. You are not what you're going through. You are not what you're going through. Doesn't matter what you're going through right now. That is not who you are. Who you are is the righteousness of God. Who you are is the partaker of the divine nature. That is who you are. God loves you. Believe in your greatness. Believe in the beauty of your destiny, your purpose, and the greatness that God has placed in you. Every imagination that comes to ridicule you, cast them down. 
every imagination that comes to ruin your, your thinking, your lifestyle of glory and honor, cast down those imagination. Every imagination that comes to make you look like you are not good enough, you are not righteous enough, we cannot be righteous enough. We are, we are just righteous. There is no uh, abundance, uh, how do I be right now? You cannot say, I'm more righteous than this person. No, we can only grow in the revelation of our righteousness, how we can put our righteousness to work. But I want to say this to you, never tolerate rejection because you are beautiful. You are made in the image of God. You are the only creation that God made that has this personality type, that have this kind of face, that have this kind of look. The way you look is so unique. The way you look is so wonderful. So you need to see yourself the way God saw you. You need to begin to see yourself in the light of who you are. Don't carry the load of rejection and depression and say to yourself, oh, I'm not even that beautiful. I'm not even that good. No, don't say that to yourself. I'm blessed, I'm rich, I'm successful. That's what to say. I'm blessed, I'm rich, I'm successful. Say that all the time. I am blessed. I am rich. I am successful. You said that to yourself with an intention to glorify the Father for making you who he said you are. Refuse to bind to the thoughts of the enemy. Refuse to accept what the enemy is saying about you, about your purpose, about your destiny, about your calling. Refuse to accept it. You're beautiful. You're great. You're excellent. I like you to wake up tomorrow morning and just God walk, not cats walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and somebody should God walk, should Christ walk, and not cat walk. You're not a cat. <laughs> You're a new creation made in the image of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Love yourself. Celebrate yourself. Believe in the greatness of Jehovah that is right inside of you. Every thought that comes to place limits on you, refuse to accept those thoughts. Every thought that comes to make you feel like you are not worthy, refuse to accept those thoughts. Every thought that keeps you away from the purpose of God, refuse to accept those thoughts. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are beautiful. You are great. You are talented, you are anointed, you are powerful, you are blessed. You need to see yourself in the light of who you are. Wake up every morning and say, I'm a choosing generation. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a peculiar person. I am blessed in my going out. I am blessed in my coming in. Let me say this to you. You need to say this to yourself. Preach to yourself. Come on. I said, preach to yourself. Come on. Preach to yourself. Wake up and tell yourself, we will be dead free in the name of Jesus. We, will, we are blessed in coming out and in going in. We, we, this car is dead free. Our children will go to the best college dead free. We are going to build that company dead free. We are going to get a better job and we are going to do big things. You need to see that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whenever the enemy is talking to you, be noisy. <clears throat> Make some Holy Ghost noise. No, 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 no. That's not me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory. <laughs> that is not me, Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. I think Satan couldn't stand that. That's what I think. <laughs> Martin, and I was like, think some you know that. Said I'm gonna stand this. Shut up! I'm the right of God! I'm not believing that. <laughs> so when the enemy wants to make some noise, you tell him you can make better noise. <laughs> if he wants to start, tell him, oh, this is what I do for a living. Praise. <laughs> this is what I do for a living. You said that you want more? You want you want more of me? Hallelujah! Hey, glory to God! God is a good God. Oh, 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 I mean, that's not what I mean. No, 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 no. I was just trying to talk about something else. You gotta be able to shout back at every strange voice trying to come at you. You you gotta you gotta you gotta do that. 
Hallelujah. When that thought comes that you're not good for anything, you shout, I'm good for everything. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. I can do all things. I can do all things. I'm anointed to do all things. How can the devil be talking to you say, yes, true. Yes, oh, it's true, Satan. You are very correct. I'm nobody. God punished the devil. <laughs> As they would say in Africa. <laughs> they say, God punished the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I refuse to take that. You are taking this crap out of this house in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The next time you hear him say something, you just tell him, I can do this better than you. And the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I got some people here this morning that is excited about the Holy Ghost. And the enemy said, You can't come out of that. I'm, I'm already dead free. I'm already dead free. I'm already dead free. I'm already there. Out. Come on. Ooh. I don't know who you did. Oh, I also have told you what to do to me. I'm going to go to break for one week. I won't say anything. I will wait until you forget what you have heard, then I'll come back. No, I won't forget. I'm waiting anytime you resume duty. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are the righteousness of God. And I'll pray for you this morning that you be bold to shout about your righteousness and you will always have the victory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching this broadcast this morning or this evening or noon. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit come upon you, that every yoke be broken and every limitation be broken. Every ungodly thought is cast down in the name of Jesus. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your spirit. Be healed in your soul. Receive strength for your vision. Receive direction for your...